Hi, in a previous video that I did recently, I showed how to make these scallop shapes using Inkscape. But today I thought I'd show you how you can actually do it using the Brother online software for Scan and Cut called Canvas. It's not as straightforward doing it in Canvas, but it can be done. So I'm going to come to a new project and we'll jump straight in. Okay, so I'm going to come to the basic shapes, choose a circle, I'm going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard and make the circle as near to one inch as I can get it. You can do this any size, but I'm just doing it roughly at an inch. Then while it's selected, I'm going to duplicate it and make the duplicate about three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both of them, come to Edit, Align, Centre and Edit, Align, Middle. And they're now placed centrally on top of each other. While they're both selected, I'm going to come up here and hit Subtract. And then I'm going to select the circle and I'm just going to fill it with colour. And this is only for the video, you don't have to do this. Okay, so we've now got our circle. I'm going to select it, right click and hit duplicate and then I'm going to just line it up next to it. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to get a bit more of an idea on screen where it is. I don't want them to overlap, I just kind of want them to be close but not overlap, so that looks good. I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both and I'm going to align these two, so align by the bottom edges, so I know these two line up. And then while they're both selected, I'm going to hit group. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit better. Now, I'm going to, so they're now a group. I'm going to right click and hit duplicate and again, I'm going to line that up just so it's not overlapping, but just touching here. And again, I'm going to select them all, edit, align, bottom. So they're all lined up now. And then I'm going to select these and right click and hit duplicate and put the duplicate there again. So it's only just touching, but not overlapping and then drag an imaginary box around them all and do edit, align, bottom. So they're all lined up now. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Now, while they're all selected, I'm going to right click and hit group. So they're now one group. I'm going to right click and hit duplicate and then drag this duplicate down and we want the same kind of thing now, we want the top edge of this bottom row to just touch the bottom edge of this top row. So again, we might have to zoom in, select one, if you click off you get more of an idea, in actual fact that looks pretty good. So I'm going to drag an imaginary box around them both, edit, align and I'm going to align the left edges here. So left, and they're all lined up now. Drag an imaginary box around them, both. Right click and group. So I've now got a group. I'm going to zoom out again so you can see a bit better. So I'm going to duplicate this group now. So right click, duplicate, edit, align, left. So they all line up here and then I'm going to select this one and nudge them up with the arrows on the keyboard until they just touch. Okay, and then I'm going to select this group, right click and duplicate, bring them down, just line them up and then grab everything and align them all to the left so they all stack up with the left edge here. Now, 
before I do anything else, I'm just going to, I want the top four rows. So I'm just going to drag an imaginary box around the top two groups, which selects those four rows. I'm going to right click, hit duplicate over here. And while they're all selected, I'm just going to right click and make them a group for now because I just want to work on these. So these are all three individual groups at the moment now. So what I'm going to do is drag a box around everything and group the whole lot. So that's now one group. I'm coming, going to come over here and choose a square and I'm going to just roughly drag out this square to fit in the middle. Then I'm going to drag an imaginary box around everything and go to edit, align, centre and edit, align, middle. And that's now put that square directly in the middle of that group of circles. Make sure everything's selected and come over here to weld. And now that's one shape made. I'm going to fill it with colour just so it stands out better on the video. And I'm going to hold my shift key down and just resize it. And I'm only doing this to give me a bit more room on the mat. Going to select it, right click and hit duplicate and bring a duplicate over here. Then I'm going to get a, choose another square and I'm going to hold my shift key down and size this square down so it will sit in the middle. I'm going to fill it with colour just so you can see it. I'm going to put this square on here till I roughly, you can do this exact by your measurements down here, but I'm just doing it just by eye at the moment. Then I'm going to select both of these, edit, align, centre and edit, align, middle. So this beige box is in the middle of this. I'm going to select both of these and come up here to subtract. And when I hit subtract, that's now given me a frame. So we've got a scallop square that's filled in and a frame. Now, in fact, I'm just going to make these a little bit smaller to give me a bit more working room. So that's a square. Now I'm going to bring this group, this group back in. This time I'm going to choose a rectangle. So I'm going to drag a rectangle roughly out over these circles. Then I'm going to select both of them, edit, align, centre and edit, align, middle. And then while they're, these two are both selected, I'm going to hit weld. And again, I'm going to fill it with colour only for the video, just so you can see it better on screen. OK, so we've now got a rectangle. I'm going to hold my shift key down and just resize it down a bit. OK, going to right click and hit duplicate. Bring my duplicate over here. Get myself another rectangle. Hold the shift key down, make this smaller. Want it to fit in the middle here roughly, drag an imaginary box around both, edit, align, centre and edit, align, middle and while they're both still selected come up here and hit subtract and that's given us a frame. Okay so that's two designs, now we're going to try a circle so I'm going to Bring a circle down here. In fact, I'm just going to move these two off to give me a little bit more room. I'm going to select this circle, hold the shift key down and drag it out to about four inches. Then I'm going to select another circle, size this one down to one inch. Right click and duplicate and make the duplicate 0.75, select both, edit, align, centre 
and edit align middle. While they're both selected, hit subtract to give me my little ring again. I'm going to change the colour again just so you can see it on screen. I'm going to select this circle and position it just above this big circle. We're only using this, uh, this big circle as a guide. Okay, now I'm going to right click and duplicate this and bring this one down here again just so it's just on the edge of the circle. And then I'm going to right, I'm going to left click on this one, hold my shift key down and left click on this circle. So I've only got the two circles with the holes in selected, not the big one. Edit, align, center. So they're now lined up with each other, the top and bottom circle. And while just those two are selected, I'm going to right click and hit group. Now I'm going to drag an imaginary box around this and this and do edit, align, center. So they all line up together and then click anywhere on the page to deselect. And I just want to work with this group of two circles. So I'm going to hold my Alt key down and then drag this circle here and bring it to next to this one. I've done something like this before when I made the flower wreath. So you can go and have a look at that one if you want to know more. But all as I'm doing is holding down the Alt key and then left clicking and dragging one of these and letting go. And then I hold the Alt key down again and drag another set out then let go so each time it's alt key down drag a set out and let go until you fill up this space and then one more okay and obviously you can play around with these you can go back and move them slightly if you need a little bit more room but I found if you make your basic circle one inch and you make this middle circle about four inches this kind of works out space wise okay so I'm just going to move this circle out of the way for a minute and I'm going to drag an imaginary box around all of these and right click and hit group then I'm going to bring this circle back in and I want to make it bigger. So I'm holding my shift key down and just stretching it out. Then I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both and go to edit, align, center and edit, align, middle until I get the look I want. Now if I want this, I want this circle a bit bigger. So I'm just going to hold my shift key down and drag it out a bit more. Select both again and do edit, align, center and middle. And that's kind of more like I'm looking for. So while they're both selected, I'm going to come over here and hit weld. And there you go. And then I'm just going to hold my shift key down and resize this down. I'm only doing this so it's giving me a bit more space on the page. While it's selected, right click and hit duplicate. Bring the duplicate over here. Then get another circle, size this circle down, place it in the middle, select both, edit, align, centre and middle and then while they're both selected hit subtract and you get a frame. So if I just make these a little bit smaller and they should all fit on my page. You could obviously just make these as individual designs and save them as separate mats, but I just want to show you them all together in canvas. Okay, so there are three designs just made from basic circles.